Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. This is your second video in your C programming tutorial series. Now, at the end of the last video, I said we were going to start programming in this video. <laughs> I may have lied just a little bit. <laughs> That's because I forgot we had to set up our environment. So the environment is the computer we're working on that has all of the tools we are going to need installed and ready to go. So, the first thing we're going to need is an operating system. Now, if you don't know what an operating system is, it's just the software that runs on every computer. You either have, you know, a Windows operating system, such as Windows 10 or Windows 7, or if you're fortunate enough, Windows 8. <laughs> or you might have Mac. And in general, you can classify operating systems into two groups. The first one is Windows-based operating systems, and the second group is Unix and Linux operating systems. Now, Mac would be part of that second group. It's a Unix-based operating system. And I know you're probably wondering, like, why am I getting into all this stuff right now? <laughs> well, the reason is because Windows is a little bit different, and I would highly recommend to have a Unix or Linux operating system. You can try to do it on Windows. It might work just fine, but you might have to look up a couple things and do things a little bit differently. So to make things easier for you, I think we should all be on Linux or Unix operating systems. So what are some good examples of that? Well, if you have an Apple computer, you're set. You have what you need. If you have a Windows computer, don't give up hope. Don't go buy a Mac right now. I don't want you to be in debt for the rest of your life. There is a tool called VirtualBox, which will allow you to install operating systems inside of other operating systems. Then you can install Ubuntu, which is completely free, and that will allow you to follow everything in this video basically exactly the same. As for how to do all that, I recommend just looking up a tutorial. <laughs> There's probably like a thousand on the internet. <laughs> Once you got all that done, we're going to need to open a terminal. So on Mac, go up here and type in terminal. Ooh, it's green, it's pretty. Once you're on the terminal, you can change a couple things. First, you can zoom in by holding command, or if you're on Linux, you can hold control and pressing the plus button. You can also click terminal and go to preferences and you can change all kinds of goodies and all that stuff. I think the classic neon green is perfect for me. So to begin, we are going to need a compiler. Now, remember from the previous video, the compiler takes our C code and turns it into something the computer can use. So the compiler we are going to use is called GCC. GCC is very common and it's probably installed on most if not all Unix operating systems and it's very easy to install on Mac. All you gotta do is type GCC and press enter. Now I already have it installed so it didn't do anything fancy but if you don't have it installed it's probably going to ask you if you want to install some kind of developer tools and infect your computer with a bunch of viruses. Just be sure to click yes. <laughs> I'm kidding, no viruses. Be sure to click install, and once that's done, you'll get to this point, and when you type in GCC, it'll complain because you're not telling it what file you want to compile. In addition to GCC, we are also going to need a text editor. Now, the text editor is where we type in our C code. And just like how I said GCC is common on a ton of computers, there is a text editor that is very common on a lot of computers. That text editor is called Vim. Now, 50% of you are probably going to be like, oh, Vim. 25% are probably going to be like, yeah. And then the other 25 are going to be like, I have no idea what Vim is. It takes a while to get used to Vim, so a lot of people dislike it. But once you figure it out, it's very useful because it's available on so many different computers. So no matter what, you can use this text editor to edit files, even if you're connecting to a computer remotely through the console or the shell or whatever the heck you want to call this thing, <laughs> the terminal. But I'm getting off topic. It doesn't really matter if you want to use Vim or not because I'm going to use Vim. And if you want to use something else, that's totally cool with me. I don't care. <laughs> so let's type Vim and then put a space. And then what comes after that is the name of the file you want to create. So we will just say hello.c and press enter. Now Vim is open. Anywhere there is a tilde, it means there's no line there. This first line is where we're typing. And down at the bottom, you can see the name of the file, and you can also see that it's a new file. 
<laughs> now, like I said, Vim frustrates a lot of people. <laughs> and part of the reason is, how in the world are you supposed to get out of this program? <laughs> well, I'm going to teach you the trick on how to escape Vim. One of the most useful pieces of information to know in life. The trick is to put colon Q and then press enter. Now we're back to the terminal. That is a pretty good introduction. We got our environment ready to go and we're ready to start coding. So in the next video, we're going to write and execute our very first program. So be sure to subscribe if you like these videos, and I will see you then.